My name is Emilio, and I'm an analytics engineer here at Seek. In this video, I'll discuss how to use formula to calculate rate of change against a process variable. I've created a journal with links to help guide us through the various methods that I'll walk through within this video. One of the first steps for this type of use case is typically to explore whether or not cleansing is necessary against your data. Here, I'm looking at a generator RPM signal coming from one of our turbine asset trees. We can notice that there's a fair amount of noise present within the signal, which when determining rate of change against could be problematic if I don't want this noise to be considered. To create this cleanse variable, I've simply utilized the point and click signal smoothing tool to apply the Seek Agile filter against the raw generator RPM. One thing to know about cleansing signals is it may have an impact on the samples. And to show that, I'll click the Customize button in the Details pane and activate the samples. Here, the cleanse signal, you can notice that there's significantly more samples present versus the raw signal. This could certainly impact the calculations of performing the various methods that we'll go through together against the raw signal versus the cleanse signal because many of these methods are on a point by point basis. For this reason, the steps that I've documented in the various methods, I've consistently done a comparison against the raw signal results versus the cleanse signal results. The first method that I'll go over is the derivative. Derivative is a very common way to calculate the rate of change of your process variables throughout time. To apply a derivative, you can simply go into formula and apply the dot derivative function. I can also look into the search documentation to find some more description or details about the derivative function, as well as some examples of how to use it. On the very top, I have the raw RPM and the raw derivative results, and on the bottom, the cleanse RPM and the cleanse derivative results. Something that immediately stands out is the scale. The scale of the raw derivative goes up to 10,000, while the scale of the cleanse derivative goes up to only 2,000. This is due to the sampling difference between the raw and cleansed RPM signals. The derivative operator applies the derivative on a point-by-point -point basis, with the inclines in the raw RPM being more dramatic and the inclines in the cleansed RPM being more gradual when considering the samples. We can further expand on these calculations by applying conditions against these calculated derivatives. In this case, I've done a simple value search in a formula for whenever the raw derivative is greater than 500, and whenever the cleanse derivative is greater than 500. The cleanse derivative condition results are still identifying many of the significant inclines and values, while the raw derivative condition results are identifying many other less significant inclines as a result of the greater noise present in the raw RPM signal. The next method that I'll go over is calculating a running delta. This method isn't directly calculating a rate of change, though it is similar in nature where it is taking each sample and providing you with a delta between each of those samples. Thus, when samples begin to incline upwards, you typically see spikes going upwards. The same phenomenon between the values can be noticed for this calculation, and once again, caused by the change in sampling between the raw generator RPM and the cleanse generator RPM. The function that I used here was simply a running delta function, which once again can be viewed within the search documentations. Of course, now we can create conditions using the running delta outputs, similar to how we created conditions using the derivative outputs. The next function is a new function that Seek has introduced as a version 61 called isDelta. isDelta is meant to identify when a signal is increasing or decreasing. And you can see the way it's used is to provide a magnitude of increasing or decreasing and a rolling time range in which that magnitude must be met in order for a capsule to be produced in the condition. In my case, I applied this against the raw generator RPM and the cleansed RPM, with the magnitude being 500 and the period being one hour, which means within a rolling one hour basis, 
Anytime this signal has increased by 500, I want it to be identified. And you can see the results for both of these cases match exactly. The is delta function is beneficial when you want to be a bit more objective with understanding whether or not your data is rising past a certain magnitude within a given rolling time frame. For the other methods, such as running delta and derivative, an arbitrary threshold to create a condition against may have to be chosen. And finally, my last link just shows us all of the different methods that we explored today, organized on the top against all of the raw generator calculations and on the bottom, all of the cleansed generator calculations. Thank you for watching.